My name is Richard Ward, and I have a beautiful wife, Debbie, I've been married to for 13 years, and my son, John, and my beautiful daughter, Leah. And um, I started playing banjo in high school. So in, in my, in, when I was a junior in college, um, I got a, good, a telephone call from a gentleman by the name of Don Grubb, who was uh, the leader of a band called the Heights of Grass. And he asked us to play a festival, a bluegrass festival. And that's the beginning of my junior year. And we said, of course, yes. And, and then the band really clicked. And uh, so we got really, really busy. And we were playing three, three or four nights a week, five nights a week. And I was going trying to go to VCU, and I was a business major. Actually, at that time, I was a philosophy major. Can you believe that? I was a philosophy major, playing banjo. And there's a oxymoron for you. Uh, we got in the bus and hit the road, and and uh, we played some shows. And one of the people that we played with was Sonny Osborne, with the Osborne Brothers, uh, Rocky, the writers of Rocky Top, and they, who invited us to play the Opry as their guest. And um, we did, and we got in the bus and went on down there to Nashville and went into the back and the stage did the whole thing. And boy, it was really spectacular. We really had a great time. And then I decided that there was more to life than playing banjo. You know, I just got a, an itch to do something. You know, I started seeing people around me driving nice cars and stuff, and I decided that the way to a good life was I had to make some money. And of course, uh, banjo player's porch was the, the, the world's le least used sentence. So I decided I couldn't be playing banjo and earn enough money to buy a Porsche. So I had to go out and do something. And at that time, my brother and sister, uh, my brother had started a cleaning business, cl house cleaning business. So I joined up with him. Uh, we were just getting contracts left and right. And we ended up, started with three employees, ended up with 400 and some employees operating in three cities. And um, I was feeling pretty good. I was feeling really, really good about myself. And um, I just remember that's probably when, not probably, it is when the Lord uh, started really entering my life. And what happened was, I call it, and the family calls it Black December, and where we had about a third of our employees' staff walk off the job. So it was really, we were heading south pretty fast, and I just remember that was the first taste of real defeat that I knew, and I just couldn't believe that it was falling apart, everything had gone so well for me. You know, I'd done what I wanted to do, I did the Opry, and I got this business going, and everything was going great, and why was it falling apart? That didn't fit in my profile of what was supposed to be happening to me. I was supposed to, you know, make a million dollars and live on the side of a mountain and look over the ocean or something. I thought that was life, and I just remember I remember riding down the road, it was 95, and there's a great album by Amy Lou Harris called uh, Angel Band, and I was listening to a song off of that, um, off of that record called Precious Memories. I said, Lord, if, if you're really real, then please tell me and please direct me and make me understand who you are, because I just, um, I don't understand what's going on in my life. I think about um, what I used to think about what was important in my life about businesses and trying to start businesses and I've had so many ideas about starting businesses and I always thought that I, just like my old music days I had to achieve something you know I think I have to go out and achieve something and we think as, as Christians that God's waiting for me to achieve something I better achieve something or else he ain't gonna like me anymore and it just kept building on me and I and I just remember I had a real urge. Well, actually what happened was I got a telephone call. <laughs> I got a telephone call from a good friend of mine calling me up and he says, Richard, um, we need a banjo player. We need you to consider coming over and just having some fun. We're not serious. We don't have a bus. We don't have a CD. We don't have any business cards. We don't get serious. We do have it. We're giving it up. But we're just having fun. 
and I said, that sounds good. And um, the, the time we played music not long ago, came home that night, and it was late. You know, we had, had so much fun. We stayed at 11, 11, 30, and all the children were in bed, and Debbie was in bed, and I got to the house, and it was real, real quiet, and it was dark. Just was a was a very, very peaceful um, feeling came over me. And I, I walked, I just remember walking into my bedroom, my bathroom, I just remember the Lord's voice telling me, Boy, you sounded good tonight. I just remembered at that time that um, it hit me that I didn't need to be doing anything. I just could be who I was. And um, I didn't have to do a business. I didn't have to do anything for him. I didn't do a missionary trip. I didn't have to be a missionary. I didn't have to start a business for him. He just liked to hear me play and to be my friend. And that's, that's what it's about to me, is just being comfortable with who you are and knowing that that's what God wants for you as a person. That's what he wants for all of us.